Alright, so for our next job, uh, X10 it has a malfunctioning hard drive array and he's got a whole bunch of anime files in that hard drive array that he wants to recover before the whole thing goes kaput. Uh, so what we have here are there are three backup drives, one, two, and three. They each have the same copies of different things. So uh, remnant induction overdrive is available in file 256 in all three of the drives. And you'll notice that while the files themselves are, quote, identical, there are there's corrupted data in all of them. You'll see the, the indicated by fail. But you know that they that they do correlate to the same file because you see the second one here is 8728. This one's a fail, but then this one's also 8728. And this one's 8444. This one's a fail, but this is 8444. So these are all three copies of the same file uh, with some corruption in them. Between all three of them, there is a, an uncorrupted value for all of the places. So you don't have to worry about there being a fail after you try and like coalesce all three of them into one. There's a correct value for all three of them, So, but we will need all three of them in order to get the uncorrupted version of each file. So in, in file 200 here, we have the, the names of the anime plus what they're stored as in the drives. Uh, and our goal is to get an uncorrupted version of each file into our host here, along with the name of the anime to, at the beginning of it, so that we know which, which file it correlates to. Uh, there's one big kind of sticking point in this in this job. We'll we'll have Execution Agent A go in and grab uh, file 200, and maybe you'll you'll spot what the sticky part is with the uh, note, particularly our connection to the drive here. Ready? So he's gonna head in there, and he's gonna oh well, he's gonna grab file 200. Did you see what happened to the links to the drives? Uh, they're going to do that the whole the whole time. Uh, it is. Ran I think it's mostly random how they will appear and disappear. So reliably communicating and moving across these drives is pretty much impossible. So we have to take that into consideration with our approach. Uh, so what we do to get our agents into the drives to begin with is it's a it's a brute force approach. I create an agent that tries to get into all three drives and I end up doing that eight times total. That was the number I had to increase it to before it worked in all 100 test cases. So eight times I create an agent that tries to get into the drive. Uh, the duplicates are fine because they will all eventually try to connect to the drive while the link is broken and they'll all take care of themselves. All I need is a single guy who's in here and working and he ends up creating a writer who's going to create a file and then I'm going to end up copying uh, the contents of, you know, file 256 to my transcriber here. The transcriber is constantly listening. Do you have more to give me? A. And then B. Did you hand me the word fail? If you did hand me the word fail, I'm going to replace it with zero in my copy of the file. That's going to be used later when we're kind of aggregating everything. So you'll see this guy is reading through 256, passing the values over. This guy's either writing down the value or he's writing down zero in the actual file itself. You'll see these guys are still being pumped out trying to connect to the drive. Uh, thankfully, uh, once a, a connection closes, then they all clean themselves up. So these guys are gonna keep going through uh, until uh, once these guys have tried reading past the end of the file, they will they will error out themselves and we'll be left with a guy here who has uh, that copy of the file and we need to get that safely out of the drive. And the way that I'm doing that to get them safely, because if they try to link back when the link is broken, uh, they will error out and they'll drop their file there. And then if that drop file is there, there's you can't get an agent back in there to pick it up because all the spaces are taken. Uh, so the way that I do this is I have him, XA, is passing the link amount back over the M register. So what will happen is once a guy is ready to to cross back, let's say here, he is ready to cross back. He has finished writing his file. The other guy is done. What he's going to do is he's going to listen on the M register for a link back and then link on M. What that'll do is in the same cycle that we know that the connection is stable because we can hear on M, we will link back. If for some reason I'm sitting here waiting and the connection is closed, he will sit here and wait until we can hear on M again. And the moment we can on that same cycle, we will link across that will safely get our files out of these failing drives. Uh, XA is going to listen until we've gotten all three copies of the file back. 
Uh, meanwhile, the person who's done writing is going to do a little bit of math. And I actually ended up learning a command that I didn't know existed until this late in the game. And that's the file command that will copy. It's like the host command. It'll copy the ID of the file that you were holding into the register you specify. So file T will copy the ID of the file I'm holding into the T register. So uh, this guy here is going to do that. He's going to copy. Uh, First of all, he's going to actually put an extra zero at the end of the file. I'll talk about that when, we, when that becomes important. And we copy the ID of the file into our T register, which is 400 for the first one. They always start at 400 and increase by one for each one you make. Even if you delete a file and then you make another one, that will be 401. It won't go back and take the number of the one that was deleted. Uh, and I do a, a modulo operation on the file number uh, with the value eight, because what's going to end up happening is these three are going to have to work together to kind of correlate or coalesce their information into one cohesive file that doesn't have any errors in it. Uh, that does take some time. It takes generally it takes longer for them to do that than it takes for me to go in here and get the next copy. So what I'm doing is I'm actually splitting the the work to do this into two different areas. So this first team here is going to head into our host in order to do that aggregation because they're going to be talking over the local M register uh, and the way and then the next group, the next group of three are going to do it in here inside the controller host and to determine whether a group needs to head to the original host or to the controller host. We're using our file IDs. So the first four files or the first three files are going to be 400, 401, 402. And we're going to end up creating another guy, a fourth guy, that is going to kind of take in the information to get the the, fi the final version of it, basically. Uh, and so what we know is if we do a mod eight, the first four guys will have the values zero, one, two, three. And then the next guys will have four, five, six, seven. So we do the modulo in the file and we test, is your value less than four? If it's less than four, then you're in a group that is that can go back here. If it's above four, then you can stay here and do your work. What this will do is it'll end up sending a group of a, a team into the local host to do the work. And then the next team will go into the controller to do the work. Uh, and that was that I thought that was a bit clever on my part. So what will happen is now that these three guys are back, XA knows that, OK, you guys need to go and start like coalescing your information. So I'm going to give you uh, uh, the transcriber and the transcriber knows the name of the anime and knows whether it needs to. Uh, he does the same modulo arithmetic to determine, do I need to go back? Uh, do I need to stay in the controller? Or do I need to go back to the local host? This one needs to go back to the local host. So you'll see that the three writers, the three original ones that were in the drives are here and they are outputting their information. Uh, all of them are ready. The zeros are the fails and the other one is the, the success. And it'll, uh, there will always be one success in each number. We know that uh, the transcriber is going to do 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 is going to reset zero into the T register. And what we'll do is we'll add the three values that we get from these guys together or into the T register. So we'll add it into the T register because the order of what we read is random. We might get the zero or we might get the successful one. If we get the zero, uh, this T jump will fail and then we'll add in the next one. This one actually worked because that worked. We'll jump and we'll void the next one because we know we only we got the one we needed and we'll copy T into our F register. We've gotten our one successful one. An important note on the reason I structured it this way is that it is possible and I can probably find an example of this. Yeah. So I just got I just took an 8728 and you see this guy also has 8728. It's not a guarantee that uh, only one of the files will have the uncorrupted value. So the second value in our in our anime file, it could be that two or even three of the drives actually had that value. And so what we need to do is we only need to pull in one of them. We don't need the other two. So as soon as I find the next one, it doesn't matter what the area. As soon as I get a successful value, we just passed in a, an uncorrupted value. As soon as we got that, our T register is no longer zero. We're just going to avoid the other ones that come in. Even if it is a valid value, we already have it. We don't need it again. So the way that this is structured is that whether the one that we read in first or last is the uncorrupted version, uh, we end up reading all three of them very quickly, getting only one copy of the one that we need and writing it into the file. And the timing on this had to be pretty uh, specific 
in order to make sure that the that one file wasn't getting ahead of the others. We need these three guys to be read in relative, like in groups of three. We can't have one guy be on the fifth value and then the other guy still on the second value. So the way that this is, that the reason that this guy has to read these in as quickly as he can is to avoid having one have to wait too long after it's had its value read and then uh, another guy's off on the fifth value. So that's why I'm I'm doing this very quickly. I'm doing the very quick jumps and then the voids just to, just to quickly get in that information. And these guys only have a single no op uh, for waiting. I actually had like 20 no ops and that was like five no ops to begin with. And I just kept deleting them until <laughs> I just kept deleting them until I uh, I knew it was working and I only needed one at the end. Sometimes you just test these numbers just by manually. <laughs> Manually lowering it until it stops working and they're like, okay, that's too low. That's how I got the eight at the top is I had it at like four and it wasn't working. So I just kept increasing it until it worked. Uh, but yeah, so these guys are sitting here sending in numbers in groups of three and the X24 is reading them in, taking in only one of the non-corrupted versions of it and writing it down. And you'll see in the meantime, XA has already deployed the guys who are reading the next anime file. They're already going and transcribing their copies. I'll let these guys go for a second, and I'll actually go to XA, and I will go to uh, this point. These three guys have just finished getting their copy, and XA is like, okay, now you guys need to start like coalescing. You need to start transcribing it into the uncorrupted file. We create the transcriber, and you'll see that these guys aren't heading into the into the host because they did a modulo on their file. This guy's holding 404. He did a mod on that one and he ended up with a four, which is not less than four. So he stays in the controller. These guys all stay in the controller and they are all communicating with each other and transcribing into this guy here. Uh, this way, these guys still have the time that they need to finish transcribing uh, without any kind of uh, cross communication happening with these guys who are also trying to send out their information. Uh, this is th the reason these guys piling up in here is probably why I had to increase this to eight is because now I only have uh, five platforms where I can be deploying people that try and connect on the drives. Uh, but that's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make in order to get the this step faster because uh, this coalescing is the longest part of this job. So you'll see these guys are going to keep uh, coalescing. These guys are going to keep coalescing until they finish. Uh, let me see. I'll let this go until we have gotten the full uncorrupted version of the file right here. You'll see there are no fails or zeros in here. Uh, and the reason we knew that we were done is because remember on each of these guys, I had them add a zero at the end of the file. And when this guy uh, is taking in the values that he's reading, if he ends up getting only zeros, we've we've passed all of these t-jumps so if i didn't get the value on the first one i didn't get the value on the second one and i didn't get the value on the third one that means i got those zeros from the people that were saved at the end of their files so that means they're done that means i'm done so that means i can uh, i run a link minus one that's just to end up killing this guy one way or the other he's going to try and connect back this guy is going to error out right now because he can't link to minus one so he's going to air out and, and and drop his file right where we need it to be. This guy, I believe this is the transcriber here. I'm going to let him fast forward until it's time for him to go back. He's going to link minus one uh, and he succeeds because he was in the controller. He can do that. And then I just call a halt on him so that he can drop his file off. And now we've got two of our files. You'll see now we're going to have another team that's going to come back and they're going to end up going into our our local host here. Uh, it, I'm going to guess 407 was a shorter file. Yeah, it's a shorter file than this one. That's why this there's no like team that's still working at the moment. Uh, the files do vary in their length. There is no consistency. So you can't uh, worry about that. Or you, I guess you do have to worry about that. Uh, but yeah, so these guys will continue uh, splitting their work. One team in the local host here, another team in the controller until we've got all of our files uh, taken care of. This guy will, I think, just keep trying to read until he hits the end of the file and then he'll air out. So I'll let that, uh, I'll let that run. You'll see we're transcribing in here. They're copying over. New team in here in the controller doing the work. And then another team copying. These guys, when they're done, they're going to go into the local host to do it. There you go. And it just keeps going. 
you can see I like the way that this one looks when you fast forward it. Just that satisfying slide of the guys that are copying in. Uh, but we'll let this run through to completion. Getting our uncorrupted anime files very important. Uh, I, need to, I need to watch some more anime. I haven't. I, I feel like it's been slow going for me. But we'll let that keep running through. But yeah, I think the, the cleverest tricks I pulled in here were using the um and there you go, we're at the we're at the bottom of the histogram. A lot of people managed to get this one down here, which I was pretty impressed with. Maybe that means that I I have a dumb approach here if if a more common sense approach is already this low. I had to work to get my this low. Uh, but I think the most clever things that I did was having this guy standing here with the minus one links that these guys could in a single cycle jump back and then that modulo trick to divide the work so that there's one team working here and one team working here. I think those were the, cl the keys for my approach at least to uh, reduce the execution time, the cycles on this. So yeah, that was our seventh bonus job. There's only two left to go before uh, Axapunks comes to an end.